Right, ladies and gents, I thought as a little bonus video to our review of the latest generation Fent 200 Vario series tractor, I thought we'd now do a little walk round of the tractor, just so I get to know it a bit more, find out all the ins and outs of the tractor. I thought to do that, while he's in the yard with the tractor, we've got Mr. Peter Henson. Hello, nice to meet you again. From uh, Fent UK, so Peter here is gonna give us, I mean, you are the expert, the tractor expert. From that's, that's what people say, but I, I very much doubt it. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've, con you've convinced me over the years, so, uh, once again, you can tell me about another one of your new products, which is this Fent 200. So if we have a little spin around here and reveal the little beast, because yep. it is a little beast, isn't it? It is. It is, it is a little pocket rocket. Um, I, th I think certainly in the uh, in the in the UK market, I think it is a it's an underappreciated tractor. Whereas over on the continent, then is uh, well the, these these uh, 200 series would probably be about the uh, the third biggest. Uh, uh, Selling tractor down the uh, down the factory production line. Really? Um, obviously, the 700 is the is the bread and butter winner. Yeah. Um, I think every every third tractor down the production line is a 700 series. But uh, after that, then you are starting to uh, to look at the uh, the 200 series and then also the uh, the speciality ones, the uh, the VF and P uh, ones there for the fruit and uh, fruit and vineyards. Well, I was going to say because this is very much the ag version. Of yeah. the 200 series, but like I say, you got you, you got fruit and vineyard. Yeah, so so effectively in, in the in the 200 series, there are there are four models uh, in there with the with the VF and P. They are very much the uh, the speciality tractors, and so they'll they'll mainly differ in their uh, in their in their in their physical width of the tractor. Um, whereas this is what we call the uh, the 200 S or standard, and what I call is the Aspect version. Yeah. It's more of what we uh, what we expect to see uh, on a uh, on a farm uh, with us. So, what generation are we on now with the 200 uh, series? This is the uh, this is the third generation. This is the Gen 3. So now we've moved into the uh, uh, into into Tier 5 uh, with the uh, with the engine emissions because that, everything's going to kind of settle down. Uh, with uh, with that, they've now started to move on to this generational naming. So this is the third generation right. of uh, of 200 series. But then with this one, it's not just um, a facelift, uh, changing the, the the nose of the bonnet. Well, I was going to say because you know having you know worked with you guys over the last well decade or more, when you change the look of the tractor, i.e. the bonnet. It's always for a very good reason. Yeah. Because even like when you introduce like the 700 Gen 6s, yep. for instance, when you put Fent 1 control on the armrest, there, yeah. you didn't go changing no, the bonnet. No, no. It is, is we only change the styling of the tractor when it when it is an all new tractor. So go back to go back to the 700 series of the Gen 6. That was just changing of the armrest. Yeah. So it, it, underneath, um, exactly the same tractor. Therefore, didn't didn't warrant uh, any any styling changes. But with this with this Gen 3 uh, 200 series, because of the uh, the Stage 5 engine emissions, they couldn't fit everything in under the uh, the current. Uh, Current model, so this is effectively a, a ground-up new tractor. Yeah. So unfortunately, because of that, because of the uh, the engine reg changes, trying to uh, to fit in all the various governs there, it has ever so slightly been stretched a bit. So it's about 100 mil yeah. uh, longer than the uh, than the outgoing uh, S3 uh, models there, and it sits about uh, about 50, 90 mil right. uh, taller than the uh, than so the outgoing model. So she's a little model. bit chunkier than the L little bit, one. little bit, a uh, little bit heavier. Right. Um, well, we all do that all the time. Yeah. We, we, all, we all get like that with, uh, with age there, but it still is, is a very compact, very manoeuvrable tractor, certainly in, 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 its, in its horsepower yeah. uh, sector. That's it. Well, speaking of horsepower ratings, how many models have you got in this 200 series? So with the, with the 200, so we go from the 207 up to the, up to the 211 uh, within the, so we're covering from 70 horsepower up to uh, up to 114 horsepower right. um, in these uh, in these models here. So you got 114 with this little one here. Yeah, 114, yeah, 114 horsepower. This one here as well is you'll notice on the on the bonnet is the the 11 and the Vario bit is uh, is in red yeah. uh, up there, and that means that the tractor has what we call dynamic performance. Oh, so as, this has got uh, that as well. Right. So this this will then have a, uh, a have an extra 10 horsepower that can be uh, that can be fed in. Uh, to the tractor. So always make sure then that we're maintaining our performance level of our 114 horsepower. Right. So in theory, yes, it could boost. You could say it could boost to 124 horsepower. But in reality, what you're getting is is maintaining of, of that 114 horsepower. So right. whether we're whether we're stationary, 
uh, because we've got because we've got this tractor on a livestock farm. If we if we had the Picho running and we we're on a slurry stirrer, yeah, that extra ten horsepower, if needed, would kick in right. uh, on there. Conversely, go back to the summer that we've had, where it was being boiling hot on there, air conditioning be running flat out, cooling packs be running flat out, and therefore the extra 10 horsepower would start to feed in to compensate for those performance losses. What I call this like your, your um, parasitic losses. Got it, yeah, so it's yeah, an yeah. air conditioning unit could rob you know five, six, eight horsepower in there that's taking it away from your primaries, you, being your transmission, being your uh, your PTO. So dynamic performance and it will add in the extra extra power to compensate for those uh, for those right. losses. So you're not really effectively, you're not really going to see 124 no. horse. It's just no. there to compensate it's, you've for. You've always got your 114 right. horsepower. Got that's, that's what it's all about. Uh, and we see we've seen that as well on the uh, on the 300 series the gen 4 300 series as well that's uh, that has the uh, the dynamic performance on the on the 314 on the top model so that's yeah. it's, a, it's a bit of a trend for you these days on the top model of some of your ranges such as the 200 yeah. 300 and the new and the gen 7 700 700s, yeah so is is the the argument back from the factory as well if if we were at a uh, at a uh, uh, you know 207 uh, in there if we wanted more performance well we could go to the next model up yeah. whereas when, when we get to the 211, well, if we want more performance, then we've got to jump up into the 300 series, yeah. which then is a completely different size tractor uh, compared to what we've got here. So yeah. it's just making sure then that we've always, uh, that, you know, we're getting the yeah. most bang for our buck. But it's very uh, cool to say the fact that you've got this little pocket rocket here that's 124 hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in theory. In theory, <laughs> in, in, in there um, for, uh, for that side of it. Um, and then really with the, with the rest of the tractor then is... Uh, as I said before, it has, has, has stretched a bit yeah. on there. We're still using uh, the same Agco uh, power engine in there, so a three-cylinder yeah. uh, engine. Pop, pop the bonnet. Let's have a, so let's have a look see what's under there. Let's have a turn the key the right way. <laughs> so it's an uh, Agco power engine. So an Agco power three-cylinder uh, in there. And uh, effectively, so yeah, it's the same engine what, what we had with the, uh, with the S4. Uh, uh, no, sorry, with the S3 yeah. in there. But what they have changed then is this used to be uh, well used to have the uh, the diesel filler underneath the uh, underneath the grill uh, and it would then obviously drain back towards the uh, towards the middle of the tractor there but this but now this turns into our uh, into our ad blue tank right um, so the old the outgoing s3 didn't have to have uh, ad blue now we've got the yeah. got, got ad blue so we've got a 16 liter ad blue tank in there the uh, the cooling pack as well has also come in for a bit of bit of a change. So with the with the old one, it would almost form like a, a bit like a cube yeah. around the around the outside there. Whereas we've got more of a uh, a conventional um, layout. And then fan wise, then it's got the uh, it's got the Vistronic uh, electric electrically electrically controlled fan yeah. in there. Obviously, so giving you uh, giving you all the benefits then of, of cooling on demand. So we're not. Uh, we're not creating that noise, robbing that power uh, from the from the engine. Uh, we can also, if we want to, is have a, uh, a, a reversible fan right. uh, in there, where the uh, the fan speed then will be uh, will effectively be fixed, but then they'll change the pitch of the uh, pitch of the fan blades. Okay. And then obviously, then if if the criteria is met for the uh, for the timer and engine load and all that lot, then it would reverse the pitch of the blades then to give you that right. that that reversing um, right, yeah. with uh, with those ones.